Um, well, I guess we're gonna have to explain for now, but we'll probably have some other music in here. Because there's a new boss, and he has his own music. The Watcher. Carlos. Uh, Kalos. Kalos? Kilograms. One, two, three, six, one. Uh, and from what I heard, also some roadmap shit, so let's get into that. Third and final part of a Mipsar Destiny update has been released. Tell the Watcher Kalos. This patch includes a new boss. Kalos, wow. A uh, small addition to the Hotel Arcus called the Tower That Never Stops, which does in fact stop, which has on top this guy. Carrot. Carote. And the level 250 equipment, the Eternal, the Ethernel set, as well as some more job balancing. I hope that they rename this, because Ethernel looks really fucking weird. Um, or Ether, Ethernel? Ethernel is how you would I'd say that, right? Uh, the Myth Story team also released a two, 2022 first half roadmap that outlines what we will be getting for the first half of the year, including the Cygnus remaster and the new level 275 area, Odium, which we will be getting this summer. So that's going to be summer for KMS, so most likely our winter update, so that's a year from now. Because <laughs> yeah, now we're not only looking six months ahead at what KMS is getting, but KMS is looking six months ahead, so now we're looking a year ahead at that which is uh, significantly far into the future. So take all that into account. Um, yeah, so that was the first one, the second one, and then the third one. Uh, there's some Marsh stuff in here. Collaboration with the Korean restaurant chain, Isaac Toast. No idea what that is. Um, is this a long video? I don't think this is a long video, right? This is a 14 minute video. This is pretty long. I thought they finally had a normal voice. I mean, it's a bit more normal, I guess. It's still a bit much. Lore! Tower lore? Big old box. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Go away. Two of them. Dude, the power creep. The constant power creep. Oh yeah, we saw that in the, um, in the Tespia notes, right? Burning server. This looks a bit cooler. This is like all the reward stuff that you can get from the burning, right? All of that stuff is like in its own little UI now, so you have a better visual representation of all the stuff that you can get. Rather than just like the administrator just showing like a list of things, which is a little bit dull. Coin shop. Sunday. An X transfer. Whoa, what's up, dude? And this is the roadmap stuff that they're talking about. Alright, cool. I don't speak Korean. Um, so, content limit expansions. Mulung Dojo expansion. 80 floors to 100 floors. And Mugong will remain at floor 80 and new enemies will be added to the new floors. Bruh, is... How far do people get in Reboot, actually? In GMS? I have no clue. I never do Dojo. I don't... Like early 70s or something? Finally got a Dominator Pendant on my Kana after like two and a half months of running Ark with Drop Gear. Jesus, what grats, dude. Wait, so you got a large drop rate familiar and a Dominator on the same day? Seems like everything's coming up Kyle. I got to 83 once, trust. But the highest floor is 80 though. How are you doing that? The Volsar, how you doing now? Uh, 
uh, Legion system expansion. Legion level limits and ranks will be expanded and new ways to make raising side characters faster will be added. Oh my god. Can't wait to be completely past this system for it to make have any kind of effect on me. Love it. <laughs> I think one thing they might do is um, the level up potions in the Legion shop. Maybe add like more potions and even potions into like basically the the um, not the extreme growth potions but like the potions for like one free level up to 209 and one free level up to 219 for like a lot of coins in the legion shop something like that is what i can see coming mm. actually this might be shown more later never mind mm. Botch boss matching system Maybe 240 to 250 pots? Yeah, for like 3,000 coins each or something, one a week. <laughs> Currently as a built-in board style, a smart matching system will be added later in the year. Okay. Adding reward stages for higher tier bosses to avoid missing out on rewards if you are dead when the boss is defeated, or to let you switch to drop gear easily, or when you crash. Boss difficulty additions, easy will, normal hilla, normal chosen Saren in the winter update. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, that's already in the winter update. Okay. Wait, they count the winter update as the first half of 2022. I mean, yeah, the winter updates have been getting later and later, right? I mean, it's it's almost March and the third part of the winter update is only just coming out. And like the summer update for KMS ended in like September or some shit. They've been really... I wonder if they're gonna kind of reset it once the um, once the winter event is over and push the summer event forward a little bit, because everything's coming out later and later and later in the year. They're almost like missing the season. Flag race, you fuckers. Okay. Um. Story improvements: adding more cutscenes, illustrations, and voices. Also, an option for you to turn on the voices during the cutscene. And adding a story replay feature later in the year. Okay. The ability to see your own individual probability type item usage records. A lot of words. The ability to see your own individual probability type item usage records in the Maple Hands Plus app. Oh my god. Do you think it'll also give you an app? You can share how good your gear is and then link that to an add-on in Twitch so you could just... If someone is asking like, can I see your gear? They can just click on the screen instead to see my current character that I'm on and just check all the equips. If you log back, they will be naked and a temporary CRA will be gone. Yeah, you're gonna have to trade for that, yeah. <laughs> and then Cygnus Knight Remaster, Summer 2022. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot something. 2022 User Conference in May. Okay, okay, so that's that's pretty soon. Uh, Soul Monster, Flame Wizard, Windbreaker, Nightwalker, Striker, and Mikhail. <laughs> All of those names are pretty different. Um, except for Nightwalker. Rule level 275, Area Odium, a city hidden in the sky above Grandis where the secrets of the Old Ones and the Realm of the Sages uh, mentioned in various storylines will be revealed. Oh. Together with this new high level area, we will continue to polish and improve areas before Cernium. Polish and improve areas before Cernium. Oh, they probably mean um, like Switching training maps and added, changing and removing weird platforms so that people can train in every area more, right? Something like that. Yeah, you only want to do that, Colomaro, when you're already at 8k Legion or something. Just leveling up characters is way more efficient for incre increasing legion power than working on their star force. Way more. Okay. And then, 
all times skill and combat experience improvements yeah, they said that they were going to be always working on that right okay so we have the tower that never stops karate but it's on music we probably already heard this in the test but yeah so that's like uh right here like right here wow good Add a bunch of quests, NPCs. This is, all seems very similar to the Tespian notes. Storyline, okay. Sneeze also. <coughs> and then some weird maps, and then one map with like a bajillion monsters on it, right? Jesus, dude. Man, that's a, that's a lot of monsters, bro. Throw a totem on that? Looks like a juicy map. Alright, dude fell. Oh. Boy caught him. Boom boom boom. Will's there. Oh wow, cool, cool. Oh yeah, we have the cinematic for the Pause. Cinematic for Kalos. If it wants to load. Hello? Okay. Carlos, sorry. Oh. We're all dead. He just lasered us, guys. Rip. Well, oh, rip stream. Rip viewers. Everyone dead. Um, do we know the HP now? Nope, not yet. Two seventy plus. Look at him. Bam. He's got his own beautiful little screen there, next to Saren. Max level three hundred. Oh shit! I was already level three hundred and two. I can't fight him now. Feels bad. It's currently one difficulty chaos mode. Colors can be entered one time per day and can be uh, cleared one time per week. Okay. All right, we've got a main mechanic in both phase and one, uh, one and two involves a special gauge Kalos's will. Each player will have their own and it will fully charge up every 20 seconds. Excuse me. You can press NPC chat to consume the gauge to aim and shoot a ball of energy. Oh, cool. Uh, on the mini-map, you can see three or four different icons. The fourth one will be only be visible when it activates. As you were. Um... What is this boss fight? Okay. These represent the structures on the map. They will start off as blue, but they will activate one by one. I don't think that's how you write one by one. In a random order, and turn red when Kalos does a powerful attack. To deactivate them, you will need to hit them with the shots from your gauge a, a certain number of times. Oh, cool beans, dude. First one is Bombardment Drone at the top of the map. After it activates, it will begin to move left and right, and every 15 seconds, 25 seconds in phase two, it will stop and fire a large purple laser. Oof. You will need to hit the drones on top of the map twice the number of party mem members times to activate it. Oh, to deactivate it. Oh, these drone things. Okay, wow, okay. Oh boy, this one looks uh, scary. Second one is the Eye of Restraint on the left side of the map. After it activates, it will aim straight to the player and fire a laser every 15 seconds. If hit, you will be stunned for 3 seconds or 5 seconds in Phase 2. When Phase 1's HP drops below 50%, it will fire 2 lasers at once. You will need to hit the center of the structure, 3x the number of party members times to deactivate it. The center, this one. With the ball. So you constantly have to be firing balls all over the place? Damn. <laughs> And the third eye is the Eye of Abyss. On the right side of the map, when it activates, it will fire three arrows in a straight line to the player every 15 seconds. 
If hit, you will be inflicted with darkness for three seconds or five seconds in phase two. With phase one's HP drops below 50%, it will fire six arrows at once. You will need to hit the center of the structure three times the number of party members times to deactivate it. Um, how long is it deactivated for? Because it says it will fire every 15 seconds. I imagine it's going to be deactivated for longer than a certain amount of time. Are you going to have like two people dedicated to constantly hitting these things? This is almost feel like they're projecting the um, the slime boss fight into the. <laughs> this is, is that what it feels like? Um, okay, and then we have the fourth one, the sphere of odium, on the bottom of the map. Oh. After it activates, it will bounce around the map, going from uh, top to bottom in a zigzag pattern. In phase two, it'll move faster. You will need to hit the bottom objects, which will create a barrier for two seconds. And if the sphere touches the barrier, that will count as one hit. You must do so two times the number of party members times to deactivate it. You have to do this 12 times to get rid of that. Jesus. Like the music? It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. But music in MIP story is typically pretty cool. If all four structures are activated at the same time for one minute, you will instantly fail the boss and be kicked out. Ooh. For one minute at a time? Or for one minute ever? Hmm. Why does this syllable have an H uh, to end it so far? Un... Ungugde. Or unnunde. Ah? Unnunde. What? That's so interesting. Right, so we have the map, we have the animations, we have the big old lasers that are teleporting, the rockets. Big old slashes. Cool. Then we have Fury of the Watcher, where he floats around with the purple laser shield. Yeah, it, it couldn't just be him doing something. It would have to be the map fighting you as well, right? <laughs> Phase 2 also has segmented HP bars at 75, 50, and 25. With two segments, Carlos will be covered in a purple shield, and if you break it successfully, pieces of his armor, shoulder wings, upper wings, and arm guards will be removed, and he will become groggy for a certain period of time. The removed wings will remain on the map and attack players. Oh god. You want to not remove the wings then? <laughs> so rewards are the Colossus Will that we turn into the into the uh, Ethernel set. Um, Colossus Soul Fragment, and then he also has a Magnificent Soul. Which is looking pretty badass. With a normal skill is in AoE every 30 seconds, and his, um, which honestly could be memes to use. <laughs> Another AoE every 30 seconds, and that Trespasser Block is a summon yeah, 120 second dealing a bunch of damage on a 150 second cooldown. And then new animations. Then the Eternal Equipment, see if they did anything to the stats. 15 IED. It's actually just 5% IED on the top and the bottom. On the level 250 top and bottom. They come with 5% ID. That is laughable. <laughs> That's just so sad. Looks like baby clothes? <laughs> A little bit. That is 80... 
10, 15, and then top and bottom, 50, 6, and 5. Uh, set bonus is 2500 HP, MP, 40 weapon, magic attack, 10 boss damage, 50 all set, 40 weapon, magic attack, 600 defense, and 10 boss damage, way better. And then 15% max HP and MP, 40 attack, and magic attack, and 10% boss damage. Uh, includes the Genesis weapon, oh yeah. So specifically, this says Genesis weapon. Uh, Genesis, yeah, okay. <laughs> Mu Mugi No Mu Mugi I cannot read that. What the fuck? Okay. But that says Genesis, okay. You think it's giving us too much power if it's ten percent IED in KMS? I mean you could do ten percent on level two fifty gear, right? Or give it like eight percent or something. Wouldn't that mean you can apply another set effect because it isn't lucky that set? Mean that the weapon can... What do you mean with another effect? As mentioned in Destiny Live Talk, we have added in the, in the Ethernel equipment's hat, top and bottom, which can be acquired from Kalos. Uh, in addition, to make the provision of the equipment faster than the cycle we talked about before, Kalos will drop the remains of Kalos Will at 100% rate as individual rewards, and after you collect 10 of them, you can trade them in for one of the other hat top and bottom items. Uh, the set effects for the parts uh, that can be acquired in the update have been added uh, up to four, and the, uh, and the set effects for five and more parts will be added when new pieces are added. Because it isn't lucky that's it, like without the weapon. I mean, you'll want to wear the weapon anyway, right? For the set bonus with other arcane pieces. I mean, they may as well not have added... They may have well just added the set effect, but not written the item in the set. But the reason they put the item in there is because they want the weapon to count. And if they don't add some kind of weapon to the set then the lucky weapon won't count for the set bonus because the set isn't going to be programmed as to having a, a weapon as one of the set items, so it wouldn't trigger for lucky. Right? And this is the same way that they're saying here that they're not adding higher set bonus. So you can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to add um, a cape to it and then some, uh, like a lucky cape or something and the lucky cape is going to give you like the five set bonus or something because that just doesn't exist in the game yet. Uh, also considering that when changing from the root abyss set to the eternal set players could no longer receive the 10% max HP and MP from the 3 set effect of the root abyss set We moved the 15% max HP and MP stat from the previous 6 set effect of Ethernel to the uh, 4 set effect of Ethernel Ethernel uh, Okay Skill improvements I mentioned is the previous adventure room is updated with additional numerical adjustments I think we read all of this already right uh, We can kind of check with the Taspia and just see if anything significantly what? Significantly changed uh, on the Tespia. I hate all things that you do. Just give me the Tespia notes, bro. Mm -hmm. Strength boost change. Okay, do we see anything different here? Did they keep the numbers for... Dark Knight the same? Selpex, when are you going back to Dark Knight, dude? Look how strong they're getting. Okay, that's all the same. Um, changes to Infinity looks very similar. Maybe they move the percentages around a little bit. 8, 6, 5, 10, 10. No, that looks exactly the same. With probably the exact same developer notes at the end as well. No need to reread that whole thing. Okay. Fire poison. Meteor flame change. Ice lightning change. Bishop change. Oh 
Man, I feel like they need to buff Holy Blood, but okay. Marksman, how about these changes? Uh, 465 to 480. 510 to 535, sniping, 253, 320. Additional bolt, and then the changes for repeating crossbow. Cartridge, 6 to 600 to 750, also went through exactly the same, okay. And then Pathfinder has been changed, and oh, they added an extra 10 decks to Pathfinder Acceleration as, as well. Wow, there you go, Pathfinder, another big buff. Uh, and then these changes were the same, developer notes were the same here, so let's move to the next part, to Shadower. Um, Range increase that's going through. Mesa explosion enhancement. Just change the description. Dual blade. A lot of changes. Uh, oh, let's see if these changes went through the same. So ten percent, and then the stacks from five to three. Okay, and the punch increase. Okay, so loss in critical damage, gain in final damage, and then four extra lines or number of hits. Wait, that's not lines, wait, right? Number of hits is like number of explosions. Well, which, whichever one it is, it's 40% more final damage. <laughs> um, but then including in plus the final damage, but then minus the critical damage. So whatever, however much that is left. Um, and then the captain, captain, oh captain, my captain. Corsair changes seem to all have stayed the same as well. From Tespia to Life Server. Cool, cool, cool. Cannoneer, please, 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 please stay the same. Um, cannonball, double damage, yeah. Uh, Oak Barrel Roulette, another 5% critical damage went through. And Pullmaker also went through exactly the same. Okay, Blaze Wizard. Yep, yeah, extra line. Uh, oh, they changed a little bit on the Flame Discharge. Um, the same tracking increase and prioritizes boss monster with the highest HP and improved an issue where the flame foxes, fox fires would disappear. Oh, so they made it not disappear anymore when it would. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Um, yep. Wind Archer just got that 10% final damage. Soul Assault from the Mihail went through. Pull Arm, Acceleration, Snow, Toggle. And the hunter targeting that all went through the same. Okay, and then Lumi. Oh. Lumi changes critical damage. Done with the same. I don't. I mean, f three percent critical damage. Sure, I guess. I don't know if that's like very important, but. Kane expert final damage boost increased from twenty-five to thirty-two. Uh, the cooldown has been increased on Joker to the three minute, but then the damage increased from 460 to 700, which is of course pretty big. Uh, Shade got their final damage increase and the targeting on the Fox Spirits and that's it. Demon Slayer Chaos Lock change. Um, let me change. That's the same. Oh, Wild Hunter got extra change. The Jaguar skill attack logic of non-fixed Jaguars has been improved. The logic where Jaguars skills would prioritize the direction in which there were more monsters within range has been removed. They will now prioritize the direction with the boss monster with the highest maximum HP within attack range. The logic where they would prioritize attacking the left side if there were no monsters within range or the number of monsters was the same in both directions has been removed. Okay. I wonder how many of these things were like intendedly programmed in there and how much of it was just like, well, it kind of works like this, so let's just put it in there that way. And then afterwards they're like, okay, why did we even do that? Let's just get rid of that shit. <laughs> okay, um, blaster changes. That looks very similar. All the numbers looks all the same. Yep. Kaiser, big old, big old buffs. 
Dragon Blaze, 750 to 950, 500, 750, an extra line of damage as well. Dude, Dragon Blaze is going to start doing a lot of damage, I think. Okay, then it changes. It's 5% critical damage. And then 3% critical damage there, okay. Angelic Buster, passives, 20 decks, eternity, first hit, delay. When it isn't linked, change the same as when it is linked. Okie, okie dokie. Uh, oh, great sword mastery, final damage boost, increase from 10% to 60. It, it was weird to me that they didn't do that to the other sword, so I guess they ended up throwing that in there. Uh, makes sense. I don't know why they would just give one character more final damage than the other one. Uh, Ilium, is that extra? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, we have to scroll this one a little bit now. To have it on the same spot so we can check the text. Yeah, okay. Uh, and Lara text, it looks very, very similar. All the same percentages. Lara's getting like all of their kit boosted, by the way. 306 to 340. On this call, all the percentages. 20% funnel damage boost. On large stretch. The skill already does so much damage. Surging Spurs from 850 to 1,020%. Dude, Lara's gonna be busted, man. Center room, dude, from 1,400 to 1,680. And the final explosion at 2,040% and winning ridge is 500 to 600%. These are, these are big numbers, bro. Just their entire kit getting buffed. And then Hoyoung, skills been improved, so Hoyoung skills that do not have an attack feature will no longer cancel Dark Set. I don't know how much that's going to specifically help them in a lot of important situations where it, it works against them now, but, uh, you know, more utility like that never seems like a bad idea. Okay, to prevent the misuse of items, double-clicking any consumable items in bags will now move them from the bag to your inventory. Okay? Um, yeah, so you can change how the two-handed sword and one-handed swords look, whether it gives you the the look of a one-handed or two-handed sword. Uh, that's all the same like in Tespia, right? Some skill fixes. Uh, let's see if they added more since Tespia. Because of course you guys all watched the Tespia video that I, where I went over all of these things already. Uh, oh, Adventure Magician's an extra thing. Fiction issue where Mana Waves action had no weapon visible. Okay, that's like the level of, of fixes here, guys. Uh, oh, an extra fire poison. Fix. Fix an issue where poison region could be hit by certain monsters. Oh. Awkward. Awkward. A whole bunch of bishop changes. Oh, they added some extra now. Divine punishment skill description has been changed to be more accurate. Uh, fixing your fountain for angels was not affected by cooldown resets. Oh. Uh, the wrong name. Angel of... Oh. Bahamut with an Angel of Libra skill description have been changed to be more accurate. Okay. Okay, that seems it. Okay. Oh, some extra Bowmaster changes as well. Well, they're really... Hopefully they got a lot of good feedback from Tespia here, because it seems like they definitely added a whole bunch of extra fixes. Okay. Uh, Android, Spectrum, Quiver. Okay, so fixation where flash mages arrows did not hit enemies in their path until they reached the targets targeted monsters. The Quiver full burst skill description have been changed to be more accurate. Okay, okay, so nothing. Nothing super crazy. Night Lord. And Shadow Bird Dual Blade, that's all the same. Okay, Adventure Pirates. Oh, an extra pregnant issue where if you used um, 
Lightning form while using the after image effect. Sometimes the after image could be output awkwardly. Okay, wow, that's a crazy extra fix. Good job. Okay. Uh, Captain Memer, Cannon Shooter, Windbreaker. Oh, an extra one. Or two extra ones. Air effect, wind walk. Idle Wimp would first track enemies further away from where it was used instead of closer enemies. Fix an issue where sometimes wind walls, whirlwind, whirlwinds were not fired. Huh. Oh, Meow Fix, where Royal Guard's buff would not be reset when entering Earth. <laughs> wow. And for Aaron, Resistance skill icons were swapped between the base icons and the hovered over icons. Fix an issue where final toss of skill description appeared awkwardly. Okay. I'm gonna skip all this. These are all not super important. Oh! Demon Frenzy will now be cancelled if you write a mount when it is active. Wait. Uh oh. We already had that one. We didn't have the other one though, right? This one. Fix an issue where Bloodfeast's core description was incorrect. Huh. Okay. Monsters. Uh, fix the problem in certain bosses where DOT did not decrease the real boss monster's HP. Black Mage Phase 1 and 4 and Chosen Saren Phase 2. <laughs> DOT didn't actually decrease the boss monster's HP. That's so weird. Okay. Item changes. Map changes. Oh my god, are they a lot of map changes? So now his backgrounds were cut off. Okay. UI changes, achievement, monster life, cash shop. Alright, what is this? Oh cool, everyone gets to look like a different color pastel ghost now. Amazing. Um uh, fucking sa sa su gor ge Wow, NX outfit <laughs> with lore. Golden Hand Awards, Silver Hands winners. Oh yeah, these are the Silver Hands. These are the NX items that were designed by the um, by the players. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the level, is it level 100 pirate overall? Level 100 pirate overall maple. Cause I remember, was it a bell, a duke? Something like a duke or something. Cause I remember I was mass upgrading, red belly duke. Yeah, there it is. I remember upgrading this thing because of, um, cause that's the one that you wanted to upgrade as a, back in the day. Doesn't it look very similar? <laughs> oh, it's the colors is different. It's red on top and black on the bottom. But man, is that similar, no? <laughs> oh well, they put it in again. And then this thing, okay. With a half horn, the, the Urukyura set. The bedroom set. Does Kinesis share cash up with anyone? Nope. They're all by themselves. All by themselves. Uh, exclamation mark CS transfer shows you all the groups that, uh, and who shares cash up with whom. But yeah, Kinesis is all by its lonesome there. 9.9k cash each in Korea. Um, Starlight Symphony Encore. Oh, one of those things I got where on day 5 and 10 you get a bunch of extra coins? 500 per day up to 10 days and the 5th and the 10th day you get a thousand. Wow. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six K extra coins. Bigly. Twin catcher. Spiegelman Starlight Box. As a completing a daily mission, you will receive one of the nine prepared gifts in order. If you have already received all of the gifts, you can accept special gift quest each day to receive two triple EXP coupons for 15 minutes. Mitra's double experience coupon box, Starlight Band Head Voucher, Selective Symbol Voucher, three Special Medals of Honor Voucher, Starlight Band Outfit, ten Extreme Growth Potions, six Black Cubes, Starlight Band Baton Voucher, and Selective Growth Potion Voucher. Selective gro the Selective Symbol Voucher lets you choose between 50 Arcane Symbols and 10 Authentic. Ah, oh, cocked. And the Selective Growth Potion Voucher lets you just like, yeah, eight, four, two, one. Yeah, the, re the regular, the huge. And then Fairy Bros. Oh, see, Fairy Bros is now up until June 29th. I mean, to be fair, they're moving it forward a little bit then because our current Fairy Bros is until June 14th, if I'm not mistaken. So they're going from like an extra month behind to only two weeks behind. So they're moving it forward a little bit. But so it seems like the summer update in uh, KMS will be around June 29th, June 30th then. So that's for KMS four months away. So for us, 10, 10-ish, <laughs> 10 right? That would be around, yeah, around around Christmas there. Okay, uh, Fair Bros, we stay logged in for an hour. Attendance, Golden Pass, yeah, that's all the same. Are they getting similar stuff to what we're getting? Oh yeah, there were two. Yeah, so maximum growth post, both pot voucher at 63, and then another one at 126. So two of those level up all the way up to 250, a whole level of things. I do the threads of fate trick for urbex now. Uh, it's not trick, that's bug abuse. We don't do that shit here. Uh, the past event outfits voucher lets you choose one outfit out of the following list, okay. Selective symbol voucher between dude the the five to one is so. I mean I kind of get it, but like two hundred arcane symbols or forty authentic. Spit yanks. Uh, selective growth potion voucher. Okay. Wait, there's a selective in there as well. Oh, here. Oh yeah, ninety nine. Oh yeah, and then at eighty one is this stuff. Okay. It's a lot of stuff. But yeah, it's very similar to what we have now, but just it seems like some some sexier stuff in there. All right, and then the cash up transfer, and then the sunny Sundays, Lord Blaze hair time. Oh, back to solo voyage slave. One point six k. The narrow is used to transpose the pendant. Oh, one point six k. That's rough, dude. That's two weeks and two days. Oof. Yeah, it, it can happen, but man, that's unlucky. I hope. If you ever transpose anything else, you get it on like the first or second try because that is rough. Um, yeah, and then sell a starlight and whatever this is. Okay. But yeah, so they don't know. In, in Korea, they don't really get the sunny Sundays very far in advance. They just get them announced on the week itself, basically. Uh, we're kind of, we kind of get luxury there as GMS where we, they just announce all of them into patch notes and we get like six to eight weeks ahead of time. We know all the sunny Sundays so we can immediately start planning when to spend money. KMS basically just has to constantly guess on what is going to, uh, what is going to make it. Um, yeah, so some more details on the Kalos mechanics uh, and a few more skill fixes I guess since the uh, since the Tespia but other than that very very similar to the Tespia notes nothing very crazy different there um, but yeah I just wanted to go through that let me know what you guys think but so this seems that they they gave us the extra update right so let me know what you think about the um, the roadmap stuff so changes quote unquote air quotes <laughs> to um, dojo and to the legion system I don't know what you guys think that's going to be. And then boss improvements to actually make it so that you can maybe find a party in the UI. You can like, you could, you could say, I don't, I want to do this boss right now and be on standby. And then people can reach out and be like, oh, yeah, yeah hey, you want to do this boss? That'd be really cool if that was in the game, right? It would make it way easier to find parties at any given time. And then... Um, 
you know, user conference. That's usually that leads to a whole bunch of feedback that they will try to throw into the game. And I don't know if they do that in May, if there's going to be, there's probably going to be a few things that they can even already do in the summer update, but a lot of it is probably going to be quality of life stuff that they want to start working on for the winter update, I'm guessing. Yeah, this is all super, super long-term stuff, right? But yeah, Cygnus Remaster, that's guaranteed and announced for the summer in Korea. And then the new area, uh, level 275. I've heard some people want there to be a new symbol. Some people just, you know, think there might just be a new daily. Um, I think new symbol on one hand sounds early, but the the, the sacred power requirements for Kalos is... Um, is very rough, right? It's too... Um, is it on here? I thought it was... We were 330, defense 380, but I thought his... Um, does that say here? Oh yeah, 250, yeah. So 250 for this, and 300 for this one. And the authentic symbols can only go up to 11, level 11, which we give 110, because they don't get that extra bonus, like arcane power for the first level. So even if you max two of them, which will take forever, uh, even then you only have 220. So it seems, if you look at the numbers, kind it se kind of seems more likely that there might be a new area. But, you know, nothing that, that sorry, not a new area, but a new symbol in the area. But yeah, other than that, uh, I don't know what you guys think. But um, let me know in those comments down below. And I'll include the links to these notes if you want to check that out again. And... Um, Thanks for watching, I guess. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, YouTube.